Steve's got a garden. Are you going to register your garden with the USDA, Steve? I am not going to register my garden with the USDA, Allison. <laughs> All right. We're going to talk about whether Steve is just paranoid or if there's really something to this. But first, let's show you this lovely video and the beautiful music that plays in the background, inspiring you to join the People's Garden Initiative. Here we go. The simple act of planting a garden can have big impact. From building a more diverse and resilient local food system. To empowering communities. To address issues. Like nutrition access and climate change. The primary objective of the People's Garden is to offer models of urban agriculture. USDA People's Gardens demonstrate what can be done on a local, small scale while building community, growing nutritious food, promoting local, diverse, and resilient food systems, and cultivating green spaces for communities and the environment. We are now opening the People's Garden community to gardens nationwide and around the world, including school gardens, community gardens, urban farms, and small-scale agriculture projects in rural and urban areas. If your garden benefits the community, is a collaborative effort, incorporates conservation practices, and educates the public, Sign it up as a People's Garden on the USDA website at www.usda.gov slash people's garden. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us. Please join us. Join us. Join, join, join us. us. <laughs> join the People's Garden community today. We are doing it. <laughs> join us. Join us, join us, join us, join us. Sounds like my two-year-old. Uh, it usually is not a tactic that works in her favor. Okay, Steve. So I got to say that, honestly, if if I um, was doing this story back when I was in TV news, 100%, I would have been like, this is, this is great. You know, look, food resilience and uh, having local fresh vegetables and and all that good stuff. And I don't think I would have asked any questions. And now that I'm uh, down the rabbit hole with people like you, now I, I, <laughs> I see a boogeyman behind every corner. So I don't know. First, why don't you just tell me like your initial reaction to all this before you started digging into it? So I, I, we were talking a little bit before we went on, on the surface, it really does kind of seem relatively benign and, and sort of helpful. Uh, what what the USDA is asking people to do is uh, you sign up and, and register their community garden. What uh, you can also do, there's a number of different things. You can have part of your land designated as a community garden or as a wildlife habitat or as uh, a, a teaching space. Um. <laughs> Well, uh, bees are, bees are, um, and it does, it sounds a little bit like a call in the first place. The reason they're calling it the people's garden uh, is not because they're trying to promote some sort of, you know, Schwabian uber communism. Uh, it's because the department of agriculture, when Lincoln founded it, Lincoln referred to it as the people's department. Mm -hmm. And so they're trying to make a, a hearkening back to Lincoln and, and yank that particular imagery. Um, what there's a, a it, on the website, there's a map when it shows you where all of the current um, registered or applied for gar people's gardens are or uh, wildlife habitats are. Um, I agree with your Serbian friend there. I do. Um, <laughs> well, and where's the map? This is the this is the website USDA opens people's gardens um, initiative gardens nationwide. Man, uh, was, where did you I was, see the map? I was looking through so many of these different uh, USDA websites that I cannot um, entirely remember. Oh, here it is. Okay. Yeah. Scroll oh, of course. Right. Look yeah. at my old my old. Uh, town of Seattle has got a ton. Of course, there you go. And so, free what food, these everybody go get them. 
So what these can be, though, what these can be is, you know, public spaces, the video that they show and all of the still shots they show the entire video. It's all shot on one location, which is in front of, I believe, the U.S. Department of Agriculture building itself in D.C. Um, what they did is they took the the complex itself, like some of the little areas there and then turned it into garden space. Mm -hmm. um, they have people come in. Uh, and then, um, you know, to do the actual gardening, um, they're encouraging the federal government is encouraging USDA employees and other public sector employees to register their own yards as community gardens. There's going to, if the FDA or FDA been a long day, um, and we had <laughs> Steve Kirsch on, so it's, you know, yeah, it's um, a lot. But the USDA, if they're successful in implementing this program, is going to have a massive database of where their technically property is. Um, not only that, but uh, when you click on what their priorities for, so they already say in the video, if your if your space meets these four conditions, so there's already a certain amount of things that you have to have met before you even qualify for this program. Um, but in there, there's kind of some nebulous language and then you click on their priorities and it sounds like it sounds like it's being, you know, pitched at the World Economic Forum. It sounds like this is what's going on at Bill Gates's Goalkeepers Summit. You know, this week, um, advancing racial justice, equity, opportunity and rural prosperity through, you know, your community garden in front of the courthouse. <laughs> so, uh, right. You're, here's the priorities page, advancing racial justice, equity, opportunity and rural prosperity, addressing climate change via climate, smart agriculture, forestry and clean energy, tackling food and nutrition insecurity, creating more better and new market opportunities. And like I said, um, I, 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 I barely would have questioned this, uh, when I was covering the environment, this would, and I'm sure they'd send out the press release too. And reporters just bite on it. Cause it's like, they look at it like uh, just an easy feel good story. Like who could, who could question this? But, uh, actually you, so you were saying you didn't see any negative press from at least the corporate news when you were looking at it. No, none. I and I I checked multiple different search engines. Almost all of it is just uh, USDA.gov websites in the first place. But which I mean, a speaks the lack of genuine media coverage on it at all. Period. So thank you for doing the story. Um, but I mean, what there's I mean, quite literally nobody has questioned this thing. Nobody has looked at it. And if you click on almost any of the uh, little learn more sections in the priorities that has that stakeholder language. It has all of the same, like, uh, you know, the DEI based corporate speak or whatever that garbage is. Um, and the climate smart agriculture. So this is key. You register your spot with the USDA as a community garden. You have something going, you've been trying to do, you know, as, uh, uh, as best you can to produce as organic a product as, you know, soil conditions and rainwater in this day and age allow. Uh, and a little, you know, white van or a truck pulls up, a little white car pulls up, somebody gets out and he goes, uh, we have just passed brand new federal rule regulations guy that say that uh climate smart you know technology has to be implemented on all federal spaces where food is being produced or where wildlife is being protected or where uh a a protected sustainable forest is being grown because that's another thing that they're trying to get you to do. I don't know that, that kind of flies by, but forestry is included in this. And that means if you're a large landowner, you have a lot of open space, you could register that as a sustainable forest with the USDA. You could. Um, so then they can say, well, yeah, no, it, 
I mean, if you don't want to do it, we will. Um, there's someone at my door. Hang on. <laughs> well, this is a good time to show this while you're dealing with somebody intruding. Maybe it's the USDA and they want to know about your garden. But uh, just for everybody's uh, edification here, you know, when Steve's talking about the the press, either lack thereof or just really lack of skepticism about any of this, which, like I said, I would have totally been part of that back when I was an environmental reporter in TV news, especially in Seattle. So then you look at the new media commentary, the folks on YouTube or on TikTok, which is where I saw it. I think I actually saw somebody, a TikToker posted on Twitter and uh, cause I just had a baby and I had some time in the hospital in between contractions, uh, which it's funny cause I was not screaming about the USDA though. Now I can understand why people are, I was, I had, I had bigger things on my plate, but this is something that if it's like the dichotomy of the sort of just accepting corporate media class, which is just goes along with the government, which is something I talk about all the time. And then you go to the alternative media world and you're like, whoa, wait a second, which is it really is fascinating to see how divergent the perspectives are from people, because I bet you a lot of corporate report like TV reporters anyway that I used to run in circles with would think this guy's totally paranoid and nuts. Um, and so, and so they probably think that about me too now. And I'm really like middle of the road, but anyway, uh, let me, let me play this guy. This is, so this is uh, off grid with, um, uh, what is it? Greg and Stacy. I think I'll, I'll double check while we're playing this, but here we go. Let's listen to what he has to say. Promoting local diverse and resilient food system. Oh, it's also feel good. Isn't it? Well, then why do I need to register it? Why can't they just say, go out and build the garden because these are the benefits, right? Why is there a registration involved? I mean, come on, you guys. Are you really, is it really, are, is America that brain dead? That we just, you're going to fall right into this stuff. See what's happening at the USDA's national headquarters garden in Washington, D.C. Visit our 17 urban hubs and hundreds of locations across the nation and beyond. People's gardens grow fresh, healthy food, support a resilient local food system, teach people how to garden using sustainable practices and nature and na and nurture and nurture habitat for pollinators and wildlife and green space for neighbors to gather and enjoy the people's garden for all benefits the community, our collaborative efforts, right? The government does not need to have his fingers in your community garden, y'all. <sighs> Just one man's opinion. <laughs> okay. Right? It's, yeah, Off Grid with Doug and Stacey is, is the channel. And, uh, yeah, so so the other way is, like, they're trying to surround. Do you, do you think there's a happy medium like a middle ground here that maybe it's not as nefarious as some of the people think they're not necessarily trying to track everything but it also isn't as benevolent as uh the other side might make it i mean what is or do you think it's definitely just sort of part of this whole uh surveillance state movement if if it wasn't the exact same language as uh all of the people who have brokered and ushered in the surveillance state, the bio surveillance state, the biomedical surveillance state. Yeah. If it wasn't before um, somebody's talking about uh, forcing GMO seeds right now at this mm -hmm. very moment, um, Bill Gates is running around to anyone who will listen talking about corn there is a horrifying instagram video in youtube short i'll send it to you it's frightening don't let your kids see it um it, it is it, and it's just it's just bill gates talking about corn but it's horrifying um what what we're witnessing right now is uh the the death of like the small farmer, medium farmer for good, we're seeing the relocation of agriculture centers, Ukraine right now, right? The breadbasket of Europe, where all of the grain comes from, or a significant portion of the grain come from, is now a 400,000 whole golf course. Um, they're not they're not going to be growing grain for a little bit is what I'm saying. But Bill Gates is saying, don't worry, Europeans. I have GMO corn seeds that are climate resistant mm -hmm. that I'm going to give to you, that I'm going to give to Africa, that I'm going to give to Sri Lanka, that I'm going to give to anyone who will take them. And when you register 
with the USDA. They're going to, they say on their website that they have all of these things that they're, you know, suggesting or offering suggestions from the federal government rarely stay suggestions, especially if they can say, well, look, if you're going to be a part of this program, you have to adhere to these specific guidelines and you have to use these seeds because this goes with our, uh, you know, this goes with our climate program. It goes with our nutrition security program. This food resilience that we're talking about, that's genetically modified seeds. And that though there's going to be a list of approved seeds that you should use. You can go rogue, but I'm sure it will be noted. And I don't know what the consequences of that would be, if anything. I really don't. I can't say, you know, but I do know that that Doug there is correct. If it's a good thing, why would you need to register it? At the very least, if you're going to produce food and you're going to try and profit off it, the government's going to get involved anyway, because you would likely take it to a farmer's market where you would have to jump through a series of hoops before you could, you know, sell food to your neighbor. Yeah, it's interesting that you bring up what what do you really get? Because I don't see any I don't even see any kickbacks. I mean, not that that would necessarily make it better, because I think, you know, that's often how <laughs> how slavery is sold, I guess, like, we'll take care of you. Here's here's what you'll get in return. But I don't even see that uh, you get like a sign. I think they send you a sign that you can put outside your house, you know, like, like um, love lives here, you know, one of those <laughs> signs. Uh, so that's it, though. I don't. I I really didn't see. Uh, not you know, like again. Well, this I, is the know. yeah. Go ahead. This is the stakeholder capitalism. This is what the the World Economic Forum is talking about. This is what all of the the CEOs are talking about, and the Biden administration is talking about when they mean stakeholder. This is you having the opportunity to go through a bunch of hoops with the state in order to grow food for you and your neighbor when, you know, you could otherwise just simply grow food for you and your neighbor. But this way you get to be on a registration and you get to learn all of the neat new sustainable techniques that, uh, that, that the federal government and the public private partnership have developed in order to get, their food to grow in the environment that they have created for us to live in. So I guess big picture, uh, besides I'm sure you recommend people not register their garden. <laughs> um, why do you think now, uh, what, what should, what questions should people be asking about why now? Um, I just, cause it does seem sort of weird. I mean, people have been guarded. Like one thing that that guy with the, uh, the big beer Doug brought up was um, that, that that we've been gardening for a long time. So what what's the deal with the timing, which is another thing I used to take for granted a lot when I was in TV news. Well, there's a couple of different ways to look at this. And one of them, again, let's just be, you know, benefit of the doubt completely is that this is an ongoing program that Tom Vizlak or Vizliak or something like that, who was the uh, ag secretary under Obama, um, piloted back in 2009. Mm -hmm. So this is a, you know. Um, over a decade long thing that's gone through various different incarnations this being the latest one. And, and that's really, I mean, that's where 95% of the people would stop looking period. If not 99% of the people would stop looking, but it, again, it's the language that matches word for word, the exact same things that, uh, that all of the, the WEF people use in their, you know, great reset language and fourth industrial revolution paper, which is the complete commodification of nature, which is what we're seeing in these programs is the complete commodification of nature and the seeding of all nature to the state. It, it doesn't, it doesn't even seem like they're being that fuzzy about it. Um, at the same time, there's uh, 
Uh, I'm, tr- I'm trying to figure out a way to encapsulate it that sounds a little less crazy, but I mean, but stuff that we can already point to that's happened um, because you've seen you've seen the state interfere in private property ownership when it comes to uh, a, a public or federal waterway or something like that. The eminent domain. There's all kinds of ways that you can lose your property if somehow the state can find a way to to interfere with it. This is you voluntarily giving it up so that you can be a a stakeholder in some sort of new form of agriculture that for some reason requires something other than sunlight and some nutrients and some decent dirt and some water. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody over on Locals says the sign is for your yard so the neighbors know who to raid when the stores run out. <laughs> I mean, if you're a good neighbor, you guys are already sharing food anyway and you have each other's back, so it shouldn't be a problem. That's you know, <laughs> Good point. Uh, and uh, I, am, I, I, I am wrapping up my, my first container gardening season, which we can talk about in a second. Uh, everybody, just a heads up, if you want to join my editorial board. You can go to alisonmorrow.locals.com and sign up. We have a meeting once a week on Saturdays. We can give me story ideas, feedback from the week before, all that good stuff. Um, that's where the live chat is right now. But also watch on Rockfin and Rumble. I know there are a lot of people watching on YouTube right now, but uh, you know, th- this last hiatus I took from YouTube for the last week was the first time I ever took a week hiatus from YouTube on my own because I had a baby, not because they suspended me. So just so everybody's aware, that does happen. Um, also, if you are a wine drinker, I promise I won't register your favorite Malbecs with the USDA, but you can still support my work by going to allisonwinepromo.com. You get 50% off my favorite wines, which I can finally drink again, and 50% off shipping. These are all high-altitude wines from Argentina, very remote regions. Uh, one, they use um, uh, natural fermentation. Another one is with uh, hand-picked grapes, a very small operation. They're all really good and a great way to keep me in business. So thanks for doing that. And if you're into coffee, you can also go to twingingcoffee.com slash Allison. You get 10% off your first order. These are uh, USDA certified organic. So definitely the government is surveilling this coffee, I guess, but uh, I won't tell my sponsor. Anyway, we won't sign, we won't sign you up on the registry, but you can get, oh, oh no. Do you hear the producer? The babysitter's chasing the producer down. She's had actually, you know what's funny? My daughter will drink decaf. Have you ever given your kids decaf? Uh there were a couple of times, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. I don't know. I don't know if it's it's a good like because I've heard there's still a little bit of caffeine in decaf. My, my daughter loves coffee and I I don't want to like deprive her where I'm drinking it and I feel bad. I don't want to like lie to her and give her water and call it coffee. So every once in a while I'll get her a decaf, but anyway, you can get decaf, but you can also get, um, well, the decaf really is the Keturah tea. It's a low, low caffeine and it's a tea you make from the coffee fruit. I make kombucha out of mine. It's very good. It's like a black tea. So if you're a tea drinker, you can also, you can also support my work, but lots of different roasts. Anyway, let's get back to the topic at hand. Um, so, so wh- why, I guess, let, let's, let's, since we, we, you gave them the benefit of the doubt and it's just like, look, we, cause I really do believe that some of the most evil, uh, evil actions are taken because people have this sort of benevolence complex. Like they're here to save you. And I, I would, I would tend to default that many people think that way. At least most of the people that, that I, I know that are in positions of, of sort of, influence, I guess you would say, um, or like my editor once my managing editor who told me I was never allowed to question vaccines. Um, he really believed he was like saving the public by not allowing folks to ask questions. So what, I guess ultimately, like if you were to go to the other side and the, it's like the most nefarious possibility, what, where does your mind go? Well, I mean, you you automatically have a registry of people who are, you know, trying to be sustainable, who um, already know how to produce food. You have uh, exactly the exact composition of their soil. You have the exact like path of migration of where their pollinators go. There's a huge section 
in this on just about every part of the USDA's website, no matter where you go about pollinators and about the importance uh, of having bees. Um, oh, yeah. Um, you know, the, uh, this is stuff that there are corresponding documents that they not only want to track and trace, but that they want to have a specific bee that's just sort of like, the, this is our pollinator bee now, and there's only one kind, and it's this kind. You know, this is the mm -hmm. bee that keeps everyone alive. Well, that bee effectively is proprietary software. Huh, um, that's interesting. So, I, I mean, there's, if I'm going to, you know. Wait, I mean, is that why the queen had had bees and now they had to do some did you see how they actually do a handover to the the next monarch with the bees they, they actually have like a ritual that they mm -hmm. introduce the bees to their new keeper prince Ch or king charles whatever charles is now I, I i have a hard i mean this is gonna sound really shallow but i can't get over charles's fingers have you seen I, I create creepy little sausage hands. Sausage oh hands. My. I can't even stop looking at that. I can't look at him without looking at his sausage hands. I can't. Okay, but look, doesn't that just scream royalty? Because isn't that one of the signs of like gout or something like that? It was <laughs> really just one of those diseases of excess. Uh, uh, and I mean, he really, a guy who can't even move a pen case. Mm -hmm. on his so own mad. he was hissing at that person mm -hmm. hissing that's not normal maybe that's, that's how normal. he exercises his fingers he just does this the shoe motion yeah oh well in that case he should be surrounded by inept servants all day long because he's got some <laughs> circulation issues there he's, he's got to work that out yeah yeah. So, all right. So I didn't mean to cut you off, but yeah, I was curious, like, is that, is that what, you know, just what, <laughs> what's up with the queen's bees and uh, having to have some kind of official turnover to the next monarch? That seems kind of weird. It is a little bit weird. It is a little bit weird. It, well, I mean, they put a crown in its own car to drive it around. <laughs> right. That's a good point too. You know, yeah, there and, are many people they don't and quite understand. They gave the freaking corgis to andrew andrew that, yeah, now i i saw i saw him right after this happened um and it was something to the effect of uh yeah no the queen's will said that the corgis should go to a groomer and somebody just sort of misinterpreted it gave it to andrew <laughs> oh that's funny i saw one where it was like uh the queen said she stopped breeding corgis so that none would outlive her. Uh, breaking news, corgis found with blindfolds over their eyes lined up in a row. <laughs> That's pretty bad. <laughs> it's so, it's so, okay. But, I mean, as silly as a monarchy is or a, a you know, whatever they call the, the monarchy there, uh, where they, they pretend it's for show, but they're some of the richest people on the planet and some of the largest landowners. When the um, when the World Economic Forum launched its Young Global Leader Program, it wasn't Klaus Schwab that did it. It was, at the time, Prince Charles that did it. When they launched the Great Reset and when they started their like great narrative program, it was Prince Charles that was kicking off all of that stuff. It wasn't Klaus or anybody like that. So, mm -hmm. I mean... This is uh, effectively, you know, one of the the global think tanks and like, um, I don't know, middlemen, bagmen before the the central banks on the throne of England with direct relationships to all of the exact same people who come up with the language that's in this freaking USDA register your garden report. It's the mm -hmm. same verbiage. That's what concerns me. Do you know what I mean? If it's just like, hey, kids, throw some seeds in your backyard. You know, here, write us a report. We'll, you know, mail you a gift certificate for 10% off at the Home Depot or something like that. So you can, you know, help do a garden box or something. Sure, that's benevolent, you know, but 
addressing climate change via climate smart agriculture, forestry, and clean energy. The food, nutrition, and security thing. This is stuff that I'm actually I'm going to download this and dig into it, and we'll probably end up doing a, a whole um, deep dive. I might call up Monica Perez and be like, "Holy crap, dude! Have you seen this?" You know, rattle her cage because she'll burrow as well. Uh, speaking of getting kids involved, my punk baby tried to steal my birthday. Yes. I went into, well, I, my water broke anyway on my birthday, two and a half weeks before the latest producer was supposed to be born, but, um, waited a couple days for, uh, the contractions to start. I'll tell you what, Steve, I had to fight him a little bit in the hospital to let me naturally go into labor instead of inducing me. But mm -hmm. I think we all, we all learned a good lesson. Uh, and the doctor did walk away and say, Practicing medicine out of fear is never a good idea. So I feel like we all grew from the situation, but thank you for the tip. Uh, if I, I would say I'd put it in the producer's college fund. I'm a little concerned about the producer going to college at this point in time. Not sure what the, the bet, maybe welding school or something like that. I, you know what? My, my, uh, my oldest son is 16. Um, they were out here for the summer. He was, he was engineering the morning show with us. Oh, nice. Yeah. See, maybe that, that's where we'll go. Well, um, and I, we had a lot of conversations about college because up until about middle of the, the year last year, that's where his head was. And that's where just about everyone, um, you know, it, who he looks up to it was kind of, you know, talking to him about and he does the show. He runs the show for a couple of months and he's like, hey, so. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I wasn't going to push it on him, but because just because he was exposed to a different set of, you know, information and people and things like that, uh, he, he started to have a few more questions. He sat there and ran the show for Dr. Pierce when Dr. Pierce Robinson was on uh, stuff like that, Whitney Webb and all kinds of other people. Uh, and so the amount of brain breaking information that he was exposed to in a relatively condensed period of time at 16, you know, yeah. from like seven o'clock in the morning to 10 o'clock in the morning was a lot. He was like, why do I even need to go back to school? <laughs> Well, I wonder about that too. You know, I actually, I haven't like posted it publicly, but I, I took a, a screenshot of Whitney Webb and her uh, new baby. And then me and the producer, our senior producer now, cause she got promoted with the new mm -hmm. baby coming in as uh, associate producer. But anyway, and I'm keeping photos, screenshots for her of like all the people she's produced for. So she can eat. I mean, she'll have to, I don't know. She may look at it and go, I can't even believe my mom. Like she's must, she's nuts. She talks to all these people or she'll be like this. It was the coolest childhood ever. I don't know. Or somewhere in between. She'll be like, I don't want to have anything to do with media, but I'm saving it all for her. Cause like, yeah, you're right. How many kids get to grow up with these people, like just, you know, talking to their mom and they're just hanging out in the office. And I, it's, I think it's actually pretty cool. I, I it would have b benefited me. Uh, I probably would have never gone into corporate journalism, but if I had, you know, it would have made me a better journalist, which then would have probably ended my career earlier. That's part of the problem. So <laughs> anyway, um, okay. I wanted to talk real fast too, before we wrap it. And I'm trying to get into Instagram because I saw this post from White Oak Pastures. They they're like a regenerative farm in Georgia, and they mm -hmm. got turned down for a climate smart initiative. It, and I'll show you the people who actually got it. It's pretty funny. But when when we go to um, aren't White Oak the people who were involved in the beef initiative? I don't know. Or do I have beef that? May, the we beef initiative is wild. There, it's it's cool. It's a bunch of ranchers who got together who uh, are getting their own processing facility because they don't want to go through one of the four companies uh -huh. that run it in the U.S. They're almost all cryptocurrency based. So they're trying to do sustainable, regenerative farming and ranching on a counter economy. And it's kind of, mm -hmm. I mean, it's working for them, but really um but there's a guy called texas slim who's uh okay it uh, is yeah it, it, i think he was with with those guys because adam curry okay. had, had yeah. too. i think yeah, yeah yeah um 
Yeah, okay. that's those guys. They're awesome. If you get a chance to talk to any of them, or if you get a ch chance to, to to have Adam Curry again on, give him my email address because they haven't emailed me back yet. Oh, okay, I will. Um, no, I totally will. Well, yeah, uh, Will has been on, actually. He was the one who told me that... Um, I hate Instagram, by the way. It's driving oh, me yeah, it's terrible. insane right now. It's absolutely terrible. They won't just let me into my account unless I, I unless I get a text message from them. Mm -hmm. I mean, what? Just let me in. Anyway, yeah. um, he was the one who told me that they take all the candy from grocery stores and take them to processing plants and grind it up with the plastic or paper wrapping on it and then feed it to livestock with the wrapping. And I'm like, what kind of candy? And he's like, honey bun. And he's got this really thick Georgia accent. He's like, honey buns and and sugar sticks and you know that stuff doesn't go i mean he's like that doesn't get thrown out they're not paying anyone you know to unwrap penny candy like they're gonna put somebody there to unwrap your twizzlers or whatever they are um yeah honey buns and i'm like that's disgusting they just wrap mix it all up with plastic and then your food eats that and i and you know, I had a, some people tell me that that's just not not really happening. But that, but I don't know. Will I don't see Will. He doesn't look like a liar to me, and he's really smart. So it would you'd have to come up with a third option, like the guy's insane. Uh, so anyway. so here's the thing that you can you can say to anybody who challenges that is, is that will please show me which one of these facilities is going to allow me into film. Right. Point to one facility that isn't protected by an ag gag law that will allow me inside the film and you can come with me and we can settle this right now. I know your cousin worked on the floor at somebody's stockyard in 19 tickety two. I know, <laughs> I know that has nothing to do with what we're talking about right now. Mm -hmm. You know, can I go in and film? No. Well, then you don't know either. Right. Yeah. How can you be sure? Um, well, it's re this is really annoying me, but this is their Instagram. And, and right here is the one that I want to show you. But every time I click on it, it says it's got to send me a text message and it's not letting me in. But you know who they gave this uh, grant to? Um, I'll, I could probably just. The USDA has a Russell Brand video. <laughs> no, this is. This is Will. This is White Oak Pastures. Oh, this is White Oak. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. Well, and so, um, so let me look it up. So basically, they posted that they had applied for this climate. Where is it? Hang on. Accounts. They they had applied for a climate smart initiative grant. Okay. The Climate Smart Commodities Grant and the Project Approved. Swipe to see the chosen one. Spoiler alert, it's probably going to piss you off. Mm -hmm. uh, White Oak Pastures and the Center for Agricultural Resilience, that's what I guess their, their group is called, applied mm -hmm. for one of the new USDA <clears throat> partnerships for Climate Smart Commodities Grants. We have been grazing our sheep underneath large utility-sized solar arrays for over two years. We see it as a win-win for farmers, energy companies, and the planet. We also see it as a way for underserved farmers to gain access to land without having to come up with a huge cash outlay. We wanted to expand this practice and then offer classes to others to teach them to do it. I thought it would be considered a great project. And then says uh, the recipients were announced we were not one of them. I wouldn't have given it a second thought if other American farms had gotten the grant because they had higher scores. If they did, it would have been deserved and it would have, and I would have been happy for them. But the list of lead partners and major partners that were on the grant awards list pissed me off pretty bad. And it's Cargill, Google, oh. Bayer, PepsiCo, Coca-Cola, John Deere, Microsoft, Walmart, Nestle, Campbell's, McDonald's, Butcher Bar Box, Marks, Sorry, Mars, Unilever, and Target. Those were the winners. <laughs> so um, right now, Walmart has ads running, and they've got signage up uh, inside their stores about how they're part of a brand new program to have local and sustainable farming, a local and sustainable produce, and this is exactly what that is. Yeah, it's dude. That it's just so weird. That, that's kind of why where, where I wanted to take you before we wrap is just you know it. <laughs> okay 
if it, it, I really, I mean, I care about nutrition security in, in like the real sense that I want to have a garden. Hey, I'd love to have livestock. Um, and I'm totally a believer in like the local food economy. I buy direct from ranchers. But when they say it, it's just weird to me because I feel like all of their or a lot of the um, federal government's regulations do not make that, uh, you know, as, as um, easy as what we currently have, which is a very highly centralized system and one where people get fat and have chronic disease. And um, and they prioritize not this. So so then when they start talking about how they want it, it just it, there's a little bit of cognitive dissonance there for me. So that's why it's hard for me to buy it because I just know so many people who are in the business of raising food for, you know, consumers, not just for themselves. And they're, they're constantly burdened by working with the government towards this as this is not the goal. I mean, at least it doesn't seem like it from their standpoint, it doesn't make this easier. It makes this harder. They would like to, they would like to participate in this. And it, they're burdened by the opposite kinds of regulations, which is why it just makes me say this is kind of BS. Like, what, since when did since when was this a priority? Because you built a system that has created this problem. So now all of a sudden they want to come in and fix it. But if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't have had the problem in the first place. So what 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 gives? Well, that's the the problem reaction solution aspect to you know the the more conspiratorial element of this is that you have a group of people that are trying to make a large you know um covert land grab uh so in order to do that you create a problem and this that kind of ties into i i was going to make a secondary point earlier about um not only is this you know, uh, part of the, the WEF agenda, but it's also part of what we already know in terms of um, uh, public Biden administration announcement and Project Veritas leaks, where the narrative shifts from, you know, COVID to Ukraine to climate change. And a lot of this has to do with climate change, driving that and driving those um, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And so one way or another, they're trying to hit all of those UN Agenda 30 sustainable development goals. There was an announcement at the World Economic Forum this week that they need to accelerate this stuff. So you're probably going to, to see a little bit ramping up of, hey, um, if the last couple of years have taught us anything, it's that we need to be more food secure. We need to secure our supply chains. Well, you wrecked them. You destroyed small businesses. You screwed up the supply chains. You had people hijack the price of gas. You had people hijack the airlines with mandates and all kinds of other things. You forced unemployment on the country. And then you made a set of hoops for people to jump through to get their jobs back. Some of them didn't make it because they had adverse reactions. And so now you have a crisis that can only be solved by here's magic beans. Yeah. These magic beans are climate right. proof. The yeah. Bill Gates himself made these magic beans in a partnership with Monsanto and Pfizer and, you know, what, whoever I, I'm kidding, but you know, I mean, but effectively that, and this is the climate proof GMO corn that is, you know, we'll do this climate proof GMO rice, climate proof GMO legumes. Nobody had a freaking peanut allergy until they made GMO drought resistant peanuts. Very few people had a peanut allergy. It wasn't as much of a thing, but I mean the same thing with gluten, you know, you make yeah. a genetically modified drought resistant or climate resistant product. And all of the sudden an entire generation of people can't process it. Mm -hmm. Does anyone know the name of Steve's podcast? It's Slow yeah. News Day. Steve, where can they find you if they want to hear so, you rant about other things? Um, so the best place right now uh, is on Rockfin or Rumble Monday through Friday uh, on my other show, AM Wake Up. Uh, Slow News Day, we do once a week. The AM Wake Up, we do five days a week. It is uh, more rapid fire. Um and I also have a, a, a kind of more like 
life and relationship and uh, shit talk show with my friend Sugar Tits, who is a wonderful scumbag. Um, and uh, that is called Blunt Force Wisdom. That was uh, that airs every Thursday live and then in podcast form uh, Sunday afternoons. And start call ins for that. Um, it, it, there are, uh, it's fun. It's fun. Uh, that is a, it, there's no politics really in that show at all. Um, but yeah, Rock Fender Rumble, AM Wake Up, or Slow News Day. Uh, all of the social media and whatnot is at Slow News Day Show. Um, there's uh, at, at least three different kinds of shows <laughs> that that happen every week. Um, we do on the morning show. Um, we'll have interviews. We do narrative and media deconstruction. We do solutions and apocalypse prep and uh, and dick jokes. Um, uh, today, Steve Kirsch, who was like a you know mega millionaire Democrat, big insider donor up until a couple of years ago, is on the show, and I'm like, hey, just so you know, you don't. There's no set time. You can leave when you need to. You don't. Whatever hangs out for like two hours of just you know data heavy jaw dropping information. We had a drop in from Whitney Webb last week that went on for two hours right before Richard Grove came on. Ryan Christian, the last American Vagabond, is our our third mic every Tuesday in the morning to you, sir. Um uh there's uh uh thank you. There's um yeah I mean we have people we're in Vegas and so there's people that come through to play Josh Denny who was part of the Cognitive Dissonance Tour with Anthony Cumia and Kevin McInnes. He was through the studio a couple of weeks ago. We've got some other comic friends that are coming through. Brett Ernst, who's a local comedian here, but who's also uh, on Cobra Kai, and he's been around forever. He comes through every now and then. I was up till 4 o'clock in the morning yelling mostly in agreement at him the other night. It was fun. Well, I really appreciate your taking the time. Um, hearing, uh, I'm hearing discontent from the control room, if you will. So I think it's probably time to wrap it up. Uh, and uh, Steve, anything else you'd like to add? I guess though, before we go, free Julian Assange. Oh yes, that's what no. You add, to to that point, about. October eighth, there's uh, global actions for Julian Assange. If anybody's listening over in London, there's going to be a human chain around Parliament. Um, yeah, the look, look into that. Uh, if you're in Washington, D.C. area, there's going to be a huge event there. Um, yeah, yeah, the biggest press freedom trial in history. Uh, Steve, one last quick thing. Have you come across this uh, Vandana Shiva, somebody who, uh, any woman who has fought Bill Gates? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is, is she anybody you've ever interviewed? I have never had the opportunity to interview her. I think it would be absolutely fascinating. She, there's a, a, um, kind of some wonderful lectures and, and interviews that she's done. Um, uh, yeah, it's a very, very interesting person. Incredible stuff there. Yeah, I was just thinking that I should probably, especially on this topic, it would be interesting too to talk to her. I always think it's interesting. You know, when I was in Seattle, we... Bill Gates was like the Mr. Rogers of Seattle. He just warm, fuzzy sweater. Rarely did anybody ever really question him. And I, I found that the people who uh, were following my work as an environmental reporter, when I started like publicly asking questions about Bill Gates involvement and in parades, uh, media parades during the pandemic about vaccines, you know, being a vaccine expert and a pandemic expert or whatever, that there was like people, their heads were exploding that I was asking questions like, why would you do that? He's de dedicated his whole life to, you know, helping people and just nuts. But um, it's, it's been fascinating to then get into this world to, like I said, I mean, it's right in front of you, but it's not, you know what I mean? It's like hidden from you. It's like, if you just started doing some research, it's not hard to find people like her or folks who are asking those kinds of questions. But I, you know, it was just not something that was on my radar when I was, you know, doing I mean, this kind in of Bill work. Gates's though. case, he gives how many tens of millions to different right. media outlets to say nice things about him a year. Yeah. 
Yeah, you're right. It's it's uh, intentional. And, you know, no reporter would ever say we get money and that's why we like him. They don't even know. You know, it's like they just don't. It, it's that's how good it is. It's it's the manipulation is so good that it's. It, you you think you came up with the idea you know what i mm-hmm. mean like you you're you're thinking that I, I you know i just know not that i've been brainwashed or that the system is the way it is so that you think that way but anyway always great to have you on steve thanks for helping a new mother out um i mean i guess Thank i'm not you. technically a new mother but i'm a newborn mother yeah, and you know how it is yeah. <laughs> yeah well um thank you thank you for having me on uh and and congrats oh gomez has oh to- hi Gomez that has is a to sweet puppy. Hi. He's a big um, boy. He's a big boy. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much. Congratulations again. Go deal with your producers. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta get them. Hang on a second. I'll get a picture of you two with uh, the producers. Okay. All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. Wherever you are, uh, we'll see you.